Welcome everyone to the webinar. Um, I want to um, welcome you to the call. This is Gerald O'Dwyer, Managing Director for Blackmore Partners. One of the first things that we're going to do today is we're going to review the basics of the Blackmore approach to help you find companies, right, to support you in the effort. So I'm going to start off with that. I'm going to go over all the basics. I'm going to review the documents in our process. And I'm going to turn this off here so we can not have Skype bothering us. I'm going to review the uh, documents in the process so you know where they are. You refer back to them. I'm going to discuss uh, with you the how to use the documents. And if you don't have any of these documents, you need to get them for us once again. So our purpose, if you're on this call, is whether you're a finder, meaning you have access to deals. So anyone can be a finder uh, and, that mean, and get a percentage of a deal. So any kind of opportunity. Uh, from typically 3 million EBITDA on, we're interested in it, whether or not you're a fit or not for the deal, you can take the fee and we'll run the process. I have some of you who are back, uh, finders, but you want help. Uh, you don't want to run the company, but you want to get into the deal process. We can use the backable exec process that I'm going to go over once again. You can uh, use it to have us help you find more targets that are out there, okay, and bring them in, okay? Okay, and after we go over all this, I'm going to be uh, asking you what's going on. Where are you? What's working? What's not working? I'm going to ask you what you got out of this. So we'll have an, uh, about 25 minutes to a half hour of interactions around that. So let's go back to the basics, okay? So if you're on this call, we have only one interest to do. We want to help you um, we want to uh, help you buy a company. Okay? Here's an example of what we've sent to all of you in the past right after we had our first call, I sent you an email and it said basically this was uh, this is not the typical one. It says we have one mission, which is to help you buy a company. We've got to build the funnel. Okay, the funnel is key to winning uh, deals. You got to have lots of bites at the apple. The funnel, once you buy a company and you're on running it, is going to be also important that you take that funnel with you in uh, at your new company because you're going to continue to go after targets day one uh, in your new job as CEO. So this is something very important that through the life cycle of buying the company, doing add-ons and then selling it off to someone else that you have that pipeline, it's very valuable. And from the private equity firms that I'm working with, what I hear is it can equate to an extra multiple. So if you are currently, if you're working our process, and then you continue to work the process with your new company and doing add-ons, and then you continue to have your team, you and your team, build relationships with those add-on, additional add-on targets or even targets that are bigger than the company you own. Example, I'm working with a private equity firm, is the uh, platform that they bought about a year and a half, two years ago, is about 80 million. They just bought another $80 million company last week. So you can buy companies that are bigger, equal or bigger than you, and put them together. This is done all the time. So the targets that are platforms and or add-ons the message to you is this is a competency that you'll be working on all the way through the life cycle of growing that company organically 
and through add-ons, and when you sell the company, is you will let them know that you have this massive uh, uh, pipeline that you've been developing and building relationships so they can continue. And that brings in extra multiples. Uh, so that's very important uh, for you to keep in mind. Uh, you know, I forgot to ask you guys, if you would raise your hands to, I want to make sure you're actually hearing me. I forgot to ask. So if you would click the, okay, good. I see people do are hearing me. Great. Thanks, guys. Uh, okay. So number one, we when we started this process, we said, send us the NAICS codes, and we gave you a code book that fit your background. So what's key from a private equity point of view is the more strategic insight that you have, the more valuable you are to them running that company. Because you, you've been there, you've done that. Now, let's say that you're working on these codes, you have them in your hand right now, and you've gone through it, and the list isn't that big enough, you can do a few things. You can find companies that you already know out there in the market, send us those names to codes at Blackmore Partners, Inc., and what we'll do is we'll find the, the uh, NAICS codes associated, and we may unlock, on you know, it's like fracking. We may find new veins of target opportunities that were not out there. Before, you didn't have access to before. NAICS codes are government codes. They're not exact. So we, the message here is keep looking to expand the codes, and we're always willing to work with you to do that, okay? Uh, okay, what else do I want to say about this here? Um, okay. Um, so once we get you that list of potential targets, um, you know, as we talked about, the most important thing you, that you need to be doing is calling, calling, and calling. We want you, if you don't have time to call, you need to use our scripts and work with your interns. I know quite a few of you are on this call, are interns and working with it. Thank you for working with your executives. But without building the relationships, the reason what makes this list, the early list, so valuable is there's typically companies that are not on the market. There are companies that if you build a relationships early, you can buy them at multiples well below market. That's why it's worth buying companies and taking 12 to 24 months to build a relationship. Remember, our statistics show that it takes 100 targets that meet the 50 to $100 million revenue range. And by the way, we're finding we can actually go less. So it, whatever produces that 3 to $5 million EBITDA in your target market, what will happen over 12 to 24 months if you're doing a good job of managing your pipeline, what do I mean by managing your pipeline? I mean that you follow up once a month, okay? Once a month with these people, checking in, sending an email, and calling. Sending an email and calling. We use the same process when we're shopping for money uh, for you when you have a deal. Blackmore builds, we have a funnel of PE firms that we think fit the criteria for your deal. We call them every other day. Private equity firms we call three times a week. We, uh, we don't suggest that you call more than twice a week till you get a yes or no. When we call them and leave a message, I say the same thing. This is Gerald Dwyer. I'm managing director on Blackmore Partners. You know, when I'm helping out with the calling, uh, I often have refer to them to talk to one of my associates. And I say, I'm calling on behalf of Kyle Germain. We sent you an email introducing a blah, 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 and I give two or three key points. I look forward to getting to uh, having a yes or no. Uh, here's my phone number or Kyle's phone number. And it takes literally, I was doing it, uh, helping out on a deal the other day, three minutes Per phone call. I did 25 of those in 75 minutes. Okay? 
you want to be doing, uh, you know, a hundred of those over one or two days. And so that's 300 minutes and you want to do that twice a week. That's key to this. And remember, every target you talk to typically knows the market from a point of view you don't know. So every target you talk to, you also ask them, who else could I be talking to? So this should be all part of your talking points if you get a hold of them. And they may even just email you back with targets. Okay. We also mentioned, and many of you are not doing this, that are listening to this call, is you're not taking advantage of the Blackmore brokers. Blackmore works with over 700. We're no longer reaching out to investment bankers these days. We're finding they, they're, they're, the market is so rich for them, meaning the multiples are in such high numbers they don't want to bother showing us their broken deals. They're just uh, making money hand over fist due to the pent-up demand. So that's why we like going to brokers. Brokers have inefficient markets. We are here to help you do that, okay? So by the way, as I'm going through point one and point two, if you have a question, please raise your hand about it, and I'll be glad to answer any questions about this? If you have something you want to comment and share about uh, uh, uncovering more uh, targets or NAICS codes, this is a point of doing it right now. So if anyone would like to say anything, please raise your hand on this. Okay, let's go as you're continuing to consider uh, asking questions or comments. And again, without we need you to share with the group because the group intelligence is way better than mine. Okay, so I look for you to add value as we're going throughout the rest of this presentation. So once again, what we're doing right now is we're going over the basics of Blackmore. And the reason why we're going over the basics is if you're not taking advantage of all the opportunities, is um, you're basically just only hurting your speed to get to a deal. So we talk about Blackmore, what you will do is you will, you will send us a description, and we've given you an acquisition profile example, and uh, let's find out what that looks like that we need from you and what, we'll pr what we're going to produce, okay? Okay, let's go to, let's see, I think I have that in Word. Let's go... Let's go to Word. Let's go to take a look at what I have in my document library. Okay, if you notice, I have a lot of things that you can always make use, making calls to owners. We have our qualifying forms that we've, uh, once you have a deal that will uh, bring you. And there was an example here the other day. Um, Let's take a look here. Guidelines, example, method to bring in, retainer agreement, NDA, example of your deal thesis, your executive checklist. That's something you get every week before the calls, typically, uh, when we're having our one-to-one, -one, selling your business, acquisition criteria memo. Darn it. I'm not seeing where I stored it. Um, example buyout, why sell, target example for brokers. Oh, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> so what we do when you send us a description and you can, you might have multiple industries and segments you go after. We, here's an example of we're working on in property and casualty with a set of executives. As you say, we put it on Blackmore head, uh, letterhead, and uh, what we do is please contact Gerald Dwyer, Blackmore Partners, LLC.com. We let them know that we will pay finder's fees. One of the ways we get brokers, and you can sell, tell, say the same to anyone, incent them, folks. We will pay them when the deal is done. So in this one is we're being retained by 
this group, they call them the BCM, BCMT group, a group of experienced executives in property and casualty, to identify, and we're looking for accident and health, uh, target companies in property, casualty, accident and health. Once again, we put down finder's fee again. You've got to keep repeating the key messages over and over. They're looking for both add-ons at the same time as well as the platform uh, company. Okay, Anything that is 5 million EBITDA, as we all know, will not be a, a platform with revenue, typically. Maybe it is making 2 million EBITDA. That's possible. So what we're looking for you is what's your ideal target company? You get it to us, and we will send it out. So you want to do the same. Okay, additional criteria, books of businesses. So as you can see, this is just one of the many examples. Terms, our client is motivated, blah, blah, blah. And this then goes on. It talks about who we are and what we do. In, with brokers, the thing to keep in mind is they're like any other human being. It's an inefficient market. What they need to do is they need to, um, you need to remind them monthly. So what we do is we need to resend out your criteria once a month. I am not going to remind you I have too many people to think about, so you need to every month remind me and resend it, and then we will send this out to our brokers and remind them, okay? Okay, let's go back to um, what we've been talking about in terms of the Blackmore process. So the codes are a big opportunity. We talked about that. You can go back to the codes. You can look for companies that you know are out there. Send it to us. Help find it. We'll, uh, we will look up that company's code and then send you whatever is in that space. Okay? So you can additionally grow your funnel that way. You can grow your funnel by uh, talking to bro uh, us talking to brokers on a monthly basis. Excuse me. Okay, what else have we talked about? Okay, oh, I see there's a question. Okay, Mike, um, Mike, re Mike, go ahead. What would you Mike, like to ask me? Good morning, Gerald. Uh, when we were going back to the broker document, it, I'm assuming that that is based on our deal thesis? It's based on, you know, some people do a deal thesis earlier. Yes, it needs to be based on the industry and sector that you know. Does that answer your question? Yes. You don't have to have done the deal thesis first. Deal thesis will go through many iterations. Okay, so I'm, I'm turning off your question now. I don't know how to, uh, by the way, um, Mike, I don't know how to turn off your question, so if you can, so I don't keep coming back to you, if you would erase your question if that's possible. So let's take a look at the deal thesis is the next. Frame out your deal thesis. Why this is important, it is if we, if you have a deal that comes up and it moves fast and we have you on with private equity, they're going to ask you core questions, okay? And basically it is a Michael Porter analysis. So let's take a look at um, here's Project X deal thesis example. Uh, this one, oh, this is a very detailed one someone did. Okay, so here you go. This is in up in the Canadian oil field. And a person had pictures. They had an executive summary. Some of you, this again, you won't always have this. This is one, this is a detailed example. Uh, one of the things that's key for private equity, they're used to hearing why something's a great deal. They hear it so much is basically they tune out. This executive who we worked with, we asked him early on to come up with all the risks ahead of time. 
and then we asked him for every single risk, how is he going to reduce that risk, mitigate it? Because private equity, if they can't figure it out with you or don't hear that you have thought through what those risks are, they don't trust you and they think they're just being sold a bill of goods. Will they tell you that? No. So one of the things in your deal thesis, what you're looking for is macro and micro risk. Now, some of you may say, well, when I'm doing my deal thesis, um, one of the problems is, is I don't have a company. Well, you've got to start with the overall market, the industry. Every industry, when you do a Michael Porter analysis, has inherent risks. And some people are very good at mitigating those. You've got to begin to think through those. Also, why a deal thesis is good, is useful for you to go through the practice, is when you come up, when you find a company, you want to be able to ask the owners about those risks and how they've mitigated them. Well, what about this? You know, here's some of the things that are going on. How are you dealing with customer concentration? How would you deal with diversifying? How come you haven't diversified? Well, I don't know, whatever those might be. Okay, so this one, this executive identified <coughs> the market drivers of the risk, drill count, crude oil and gas prices, production costs, bear, seasonal fluctuation. These are all risks. There are opportunities and there are risks. Okay? Um, so you can see an excellent job of what this did. So he went on and he started describing okay um, strategies organic transformation lean out these companies uh, do add-ons he described his risk mitigation strategies so these are things again the by the way the private equity firms loved this when we went over um, the thesis with private equity, and again, once again, I don't look for you to do a detailed one at this time, but this is where you're going. He, they, they, got, they couldn't, they, everyone wanted to go, what do I need to sign up with you right now? Do you have a company? Oh, you don't? Doesn't matter. We'll wait. We love how you think. Okay? So look at this. Once again, I'm showing you specific strategies and initiatives to mitigate risk and add value how to reduce capital equipment costs in the drilling services is a big issue. CapEx, if you were trying to buy a transportation company right now, heavy assets command lower multiples because of the cap, all the money required to keep the assets safe in trucking and on the road and fleet age. These are, that would be issues there. How would you mitigate that if you were in transportation? So here you go. I'm going to continue to show you how this executive looked, took each one of the issues, then came up with every strategy he could think of, putting the best ones, of course, on top. Okay. Let's keep going through this so you can tend to see. Then your, your deal thesis. How are you going to exit? What are all the potential ways? And by the way, IPO, I, I, you know, those of you who used to came out of business school years ago, pre-2000, everyone thinks it's IPO. Rarely, less than 1% of companies go public. So that's a 1 in 100 probability. Okay? So, but you can put it down. It's happening. If they're big enough, and, and the market, you know, hitting at the right timing. Lately, we've seen a lot more IPOs. I've seen a lot of private equity firms take their companies uh, public lately. But that's a, a small window. And again, out of the total number of deals, very, very low. Okay. So you hear, you see the exit strategy. What's also great is this executive... Um, talked about valuation and investor returns. Private equity, remember it's a three to five year 
process. This is an excellent. He, he go, goes, he talks about it. Uh, he talks about the issues on this. He had a particular target in, uh, uh, in mind, what was going on, but how, how he could still get a great return. Then, as you can see, he took some of the uh, materials he had collected, some of the information of, of, from the five-year plan that he got, and he created Acquis uh, how he would, what's he going to do? Notice he talks about the, how much debt he was going to use, how much equity, and what was going to happen each year. Wonderful. This guy was wonderful. He did IRRs. By year three, he'll have had reached a 30 per, uh, 32% IRR. Whoa, that's a slam dunk, and he assumed a 5x EBITDA, the same of what he was going to pay for it. Wonderful stuff. Okay, uh, Mike, do you, let's see, did you have a new question? Mike, I see your, do you have a new question? Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's continue to go through once again. Another thing in your deal thesis, you need to talk about the market and industry. So here's the mar uh, once uh, the um, overall macro factors. Now, once again, I'm going to go back up to the top. The executive did a quick summary and then went into the risks right away. Many deal theses often start at the market and industry. But what is beautiful, what private equity cares about, and this executive that we worked with is very sophisticated. He knows what the market and industry, yeah, that's important, but what's number one is the summary and the risks and strategies to, uh, to do it. Now, let's talk about the market and industry. Very, this exec was very strong in understanding how to sell deals. He was a former deal exec at one of the co companies he was at. So if you'll notice, once again, he's talking about the industry. We, he was able, through the owner, gather data on what, what's going on in rig count. He was actually also able to pull some of this through Google, doing Google searches. This is where your intern can be of great help. Pulling this information again early to, or as you go through the 12 to 24 month Blackmore process is critical. Okay, so you can see there, he's looking at, again, he goes back to the market, external risks. Beautiful. Private equity is always asking, what's the risk? This is just, when I look at this again, it's a beautiful thing, beautiful thing. Uh, goes over operations and services opportunity, how it works. This is again for a specific company. He, again, he took data he gathered from the owner. There was also, I think, a broker involved, so he, put, he gathered all of it and then created his own deal thesis for the opportunity. Once again, you know, what this guy does so well, you know, when I've got a I'm gonna I'm gonna print this so I don't forget to do it right now, and uh, send it to my team. This is I have forgotten about it, and it is a beautiful, beautiful document. Okay, so as you can see, once again, he keeps going over risks, identifies those risks. Let's see in the macro environment. Give some nice little charts. He's talking about seasonality. Again, private equity loves data. Everything backed up by data. Once again, you don't have to do this. You can get Google. You can look stuff at Google. If it's a broker, ask them for the data. So uh, let's see what this is. So the exec had, so he, he's addressing the, each of the, looks like each of the issues and showing 
um, what those are, and he's show, illustrating them with data along with talking about his risk mitigation. Productivity statistics, and I think these are productivity statistics of his actual deal. Once again, this is, a, this is an ideal. This is not what I'm expecting you to do. I'm going to show you a uh, first one um, later on. I'm going, to I'm going to open that up in just a moment. So he talks about utilization. He's going through each aspect of the company. Here he is so, uh, throwing forecast SG&A on this company. So when you get a, an actual deal, you're going to want to have, have be ready for this kind of detail if you can. It's not always necessary. Don't let this scare you. Here he is. He's going into the competition. It's great. Management, who's there? He did an analysis of that. Proceeds of sale. What's he going to do with the money? What's the structure? Why is this important? Because they're going to, they, we want to know, the private equity firm wants to know who owns what and to ascertain their decision making strategy. He's a analyzing who's staying, who's not staying. Again, going into the exit strategy and business case once again. Go ahead and take a moment and read that. Okay, so if you're, I welcome you. If you like this, um, I'm happy to send it to you, but you have to send me an email. I do want to let you know I'm 400 emails behind. I've been uh, shopping a deal, and I'm actively involved in it right now under a very short time frame. So uh, I'm behind on everything, and I apologize. If In fact, if uh, I promised you anything, I've been a little unreliable for the last few days. Okay, so here you go, another standalone as is preliminary valuation. Lots of good data. Let's see if what the conclusion is that he has here. Okay, um, he's talking about what's going on, and there's the end. So this is a fabulous top drawer or thesis combined with an actual deal that that executive was happening. Now, you may want to know what happened on this deal. The owners pulled out and uh, decided not to sell. There was fights. Now, here was a great company, fights among those five, uh, five owners, and the company went out of business. One part survived, and the rest went out. So they, uh, these executives lost about $20 million by not selling to our executive who would have taken this and uh, grown it tremendously. Okay, so let's take a look at, um, uh, let's see, creating your step, uh, strategy. Nope, I don't want to talk to that. Guidelines, let's talk about first draft of your deal thesis example. Here's one version. You want to be able to describe to yourself, this is for you again, what's the market you want to go after? Okay. Again, this helps you hone your focus. Any ideas about the size and growth? Submarkets, are there any? What are they why are they attractive? What you these are the ingredients that make for opportunity. You want to ask yourself, what is happening in that market that creates an opportunity for your ideal, you know, your business idea to grow and make good margins? key thing. I got this information from listening to a private equity firm and what questions they ask. So, you know, how are you going to create opportunities? Margins must grow. Buying a company that is showing poor margins may indicate an opportunity. Okay? Uh, so, where, how do you look for opportunities? Look for demand ships. Are there pockets of value being denied? 
new technology that can be used, product services coming to market, what can you bring, where do you see trends. You could buy companies with the new technology, product, or services and do add-ons. That's possible, okay? But one thing, you could say, well, I can make money if I can buy all these things in other companies. That won't sell, that will not sell to a private equity firm. The reason why that won't sell to a private equity firm is one of the questions they always have in the back of their mind is if you can't get any more acquisitions. Acquisitions are tough as they are, really. They're getting one deal done is tough. Once you get a platform, add-ons are easier, but it doesn't mean you'll be able to get a deal done. They are easier once you have a platform, but there are many cases, one of the risks private equity always asks is, okay, assume you can't get another company. How else, even though you can't, uh, you can maybe buy new technology, that's maybe not in a company format, how are you going to do this all internally? How are you going to do it all internally? What will be the cost? Okay. Key thing they're going to be asking you, what tactically will you do to make this happen? Again, notice these. this is very thin. You saw the last example, it was very detailed. This is thin, this is an outline. These are questions that you need to be asking and these are questions that when you're talking with owners to qualify an owner, you need to be asking them. Okay. What, approximately, what does the target environment look like? You know, how big is it? How many billions? Numbers. Okay. In this, with this executive, the number of actual targets really wore five to ten. The odds of him getting a deal done, this 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 deal never went any anywhere. There weren't enough targets. There just weren't, and we never got a deal done. So what, you know, Mike, you were asking about the deal thesis. Is it the basis for coming up with your uh, information to give to us to come up with an advertisement for so we can get out to our brokers? Yeah, look at this. We ask you, what are the characteristics of an ideal platform? Okay. How is this a good fit for you? Why are you the right guy to run this company? That's another question you want to be asking yourself. Okay. Private equity loves executives who have strategic, the tr strategic knowledge. You know everyone in the market. That's the ideal 10 to 20 plus years experience. P&L, double the size you're trying to buy. Let's look at another example of a deal thesis. Okay. Um, Let's take a look, guy. Uh, memo creating your strategy, deal thesis, acquisition criteria memo. That's one of the things that we often ask you. This is the quick and dirty one that we include in almost every email we send you and what, and when we send our first backable CEO. What you want to be able to do is describe the industry, size, growth margins, again, this macro level, and then there's going to be the micro level. That means how is this individual company that you want to buy, that's the drill down, compared to the rest of the industry. If the rest of the industry has really poor margins in general, maybe 5%. I'm working on a deal right now in distribution. It's a, uh, God, what do they make? Um, the company is, helps, it's a fundraising company. They help churches, schools do fundraising. The company does a hundred million and it's only doing about three or four million of EBITDA. They have thousands of people that work there at times. Looks like a terrible business model. We've been working with the exec and we're asking him, you know, can this company, is the industry, is there any way it can improve its margins? Because at this point, if you're bringing in 100 million a year and you're only making three to five million of EBDA, that's a very poor use of money. Is it a turnaround situation? Is it badly run? 
you know, he's been trying to get insight to that. So you need to know in every industry and segment what's going on the macro and then at the micro level. Oh, um, uh, key industry and trends, that's a key thing. Um, okay, opportunities, as many as possible, folks. You need to live thinking about those. Describe them. Write them down. Be ready to talk to them at, at a, a dime, uh, on a dime. And when you're talking to executives that you're trying to buy their companies, you should be using this, and you've all been sent this before, use this as your outline to get information from them. Tell me some of the trends you're seeing in the, in the macro and the micro level. You don't have to figure this all out. Ask other people. Use this as your cheat sheet to ask questions. Okay. Uh, if you have interns, I know some of you are, who, are, uh, who are on here on interns, I want you to be going out to your interns and getting them to gather this information. I'm going to go to Thomas Yang. You have a question. Tom, go ahead. Hello? Yes, Thomas. Hey, Gerald. Hi, how are you? Good, good. Hey, question I have, uh, actually, actually you started to answer, it was really um, with interns, uh, you know, how do you help them get going, you know, what's the best way, so yeah. you just answer that question. Okay, great, and, and yeah, uh, oh, oh, I, go ahead. And the other question, uh, I just, um, I think you answered before that you wanted an email, is really getting some samples of some of these documents. Uh, I know some of the basic outline you send sent to us, but like the previous one that you showed us, I thought that was very helpful to really be able to digest and understand, you know, how uh, how to be efficient in gathering the type of things that we want. And mm -hmm. you know, particularly for someone like myself, who's, who has not done deals like this with you. So okay, great. Well, Thomas, I want to remind you to do one thing, and anyone else listening to this call, if you want something. Uh, please email me, and just remember, currently I'm under mentally underwater with so many projects. I will answer your email, uh, but please send a specific request. You need to state the name of the memo. Notice here in the in the line, and in the other document, uh, I'm going to go back to it. Let's see, first draft of your deal thesis, project deal thesis. Uh, notice this one is called Project Triple X Deal Thesis. You need to ask me for them, okay? That's why I do these Thursday calls. These are designed to improve your, have you see all the resources that are available to you and to help you go back to doing things that you may have forgotten to do. And there are, uh, there are many tools, I'm going to go back to some of the other ones, that are still in your, uh, that are in some of the past emails. That detailed one, Thomas, you're correct, was not there. So you're going to have to ask me this. This was sent to all of you. Okay? So we've talked about using this acquisition criteria memo. This is the quick and dirty one. You want to be adding to it. Your interns can be, you can say, uh, uh, you can put the intern to do analysis. Get me an industry script, uh, description. Find me um, uh, the size, growth, and margins that are on the macro level in this industry and this segment. You know, you're going to have to guide your interns. You want to have your interns on these calls. And by the way, I'm recording this call. So if you want, if you get an intern in the future, I can send them this call, uh, this, uh, this, and they will see this live, and they will hear uh, questions and they will this can you and them can, uh, the two of you or three of you or four of you however many you have can sit down with this and walk them through it but you're gonna it needs to be you and them interacting on the phone watching this webinar <clears throat> okay so um, we talked about it so if, if, if you recall you can, uh, we talked about two things. You want to write your own answers to these, and then every time you talk to an expert and uh, an owner in the field, you would be trying to ask them these same questions, okay? So this is an example.
of that. Okay, let's go to Monica. You have a question, Monica, or comment? Monica, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes, I saw you had a question. I can't see what it is, so go ahead. I actually sent these questions to you earlier, and I don't know if you've addressed them already, Gerald, because I got on the call late. Okay, but just go I ahead and bring them up. Okay, additional information on the actual dialogue for initial call, messages and follow-up, additional information on deals in progress, examples, how they happened and how they are moving along, how people are spinning their buy interest with consulting, and pro progressing a prospect remotely with no physical contact. Okay, great. <coughs> um, that, those are great questions. Okay, so the purpose of this call, okay, and then uh, uh, for uh, some of these, uh, I'm going back to the basics. So that's what the, how long, what time did you get on the call so I can know where you were at at the time? Ten, ten minutes ago. Oh, okay, got it. So what I what I said that on the purpose of this call, Monica, um, and we can do those on the next call, the uh, purpose of this call is to go back to the basics. So what I did is went back to the first email that we sent you about the PE a backable exec process. On this call, and by the way, we you can get the recording from me for the first part of it by sending me an email. I'm going to put you back on mute. Uh, the purpose of this call is to go over each of the different areas that we're asking. So we talked about how to expand the NISCS codes, different ways of doing it. We talked about writing up your uh, broker description and how to do it. And what we've been talking about is different methodologies and levels of detail to frame out your deal thesis depending on whether or not you're starting out early, just get, uh, wrapping your head about the market you're going after in the segment, to when you have a target and you're actively going after the kind of data you're going to need and what a detailed uh, thesis is going to look like from a private equity point of view. Okay, that's where we are, Monica. So uh, some of those questions uh, I'd like you to ask uh, uh, on the call next week. Okay? All right. So we also talked about in this email, number four is to update your LinkedIn profile only if you want to. So one of the things, if, you're, if you want to utilize the Blackmore name as you're going through this process, because often when you call up executives, they're going to pull up your name, see who you are, you may or may not want us in your profile. If you're working full-time for a public company or any company, that probably isn't the best thing. But if you're doing consulting, um, uh, you will be. I do want to address something about consulting, Monica. Um, all executives, what we, what we find, in order to be an effective consultant, you want to be doing 50% business development and the other 50% of your time is delivery. If you get too caught up in any consulting project that you want and you ignore business development, like it's building your funnel, what will happen is you'll be left with a big gap in funding. So that's a key thing uh, to keep in mind. Um, for we've talked about if you do not have an intern, we highly recommend you get them. It's worth you. Some you can, some will work for the experience. Others you can pay them nominal amounts. All of our executives get small um, uh, stipends when a deal get when each deal gets done. Uh, we also recommend you buy a, <coughs> a Nook <coughs> or a electronic reading reader so that you can read some of the books that we recommended. So, okay, those were some of the things that we included in the document that we first sent you. There was a at that acquisition criteria memo right here. This was sent to you originally back then. What also was in that memo was, as you'll see, an acquisition profile example, which we, uh, which is an example of what that broker uh, uh, example looked like. There was a company qualifying form. Now that's new, so many of you have not seen our company qualifying form, and let me show it to you. Um, Let's see. Nope. This is this. That's an old one. We have a company qualifying form. 
Let's see. That we now use company qualifying form, black form, maybe this is it. Yes, okay. So what you can see here, this is our new version. Monica, if you were uh, had a company that you wanted to, to go, you know what, I want to go after this, let's start shopping. Let's go, you know, what I do is I have to go to my deal team. At any moment in time, they are working on so many deals that they do not necessarily have time to shop everything. We only have so many resources. So what we do is we have a program to evaluate deals. You put your name, address, phone number, very clear, right? The purpose of the document is to help you qualify your deal. Is it really shoppable, right? That's really what we're looking. Do you have an angle? Does it fit with private equity? I went too far there, right? Will it be proprietary versus at some big auction? Okay? So if you don't have this and you need it, you want to ask us for it, okay? So we need to know the reason for sale. What's the compelling reason for talking to uh, the owner, are they, did they, are they retiring, are they deceased, you know, what's going on? We need a little background. So you want to be asking these questions. How do you do know the owners? <coughs> Excuse me, if you don't know the owners well, uh, or have a relationship, haven't been developing a relationship, doesn't mean we can't do a deal. It's just, you, you don't have an angle. It's, it's not as much. Here's our criteria. So we give you the criteria. Here's the next part. Is there a sell side person? Bank, is it a broker? Investment banks are different than brokers. With brokers, we have a better chance of winning the deal. If it's an investment bank, very low probability. If it's an investment bank and you're early before the deal is being shopped uh, uh, widely, we have a very good chance. Okay? So these are some of the questions that we ask you with this form. What's the time frame? Company information, revenue, EBITDA. Okay. This is the data we need. Do, do you have the revenues for the last five years? Well, if not, you're going to need to get it. You know, generally, you know, what kind of deal type is this? Buy out, buy in, carve out. Are you going to play a role in it? Some of the deals that we get brought by executives like you on the call is you're not a fit. So you want to either a finder's fee, you get consulting. If you're getting, you know, if you're getting a, a position, we're not going to give you a finder's fee. But if you're if you're not doing anything, you're not brought in for consulting or. Um, you know, some kind of position, we'll pay your finder's fee. What's your strategy? Again, this is very quick and dirty. This is combined to be a quick analysis to go, are we interested? Okay. Um, now, some of you, as you know, may have a lot more information because you prepared for this day. Okay. So that's an example of what we're looking for. Okay. So the purpose of this call has been to review some of the documents that you get uh, that in stage one and the purpose of them. Let's now go to what happens once you get us uh, your NICS codes. What you get from us is the following. If you recall, you we send out to you a target list that you see right here with your NICS codes. We send uh, an overview on some strategies on how to network to find companies because you don't want to just um, rely on the calling list. You want to keep expanding it. So there's a networking approach. Remember, we gave you the internship listing. We, we gave you an article on how to develop your network. We gave you an article on searching for the business nest practices. We gave you a set of scripts and what to expect and rules of thumb on this. We gave you a Blackmore advisor and DA to sign. Okay? We then sent you the list and we said, hey, 
Here's what you need to do with that list. Review it. Send it. If you've got any changes, send it here. Sort the list. Make sure that everything's privately held. The goal is have find targets that have at least 5 million EBTA. That's the goal. It may be in the 3 to 5. The smaller it is, by the way, if it's under 3 million, a uh, 99% uh, chance what we'll do is we'll, we'll have what we'll do is we'll shop it that deal to a strategic out there and they'll just roll it in and we'll give you a uh, part of our deal fee so smaller deals bring them to us maybe they can be uh, add-ons to strategics we know everyone out there um, or can know them okay we talk about signing the non circumvent we talk about you need to get going expand your network go get board opportunities consulting buy out opportunities the following attachments will help you understand the actions to take now I know we're all busy but that's why I'm reviewing all this there's things that you've forgotten Re attend these webinars right we talk about that five read the attachment Okay, get your intern. Have your intern on the webinars. All of this was discussed with you. We need you to review the basics. Okay, all right. We have a uh, uh, this real conclude the call in just a few minutes. If you have any additional questions, I need you to raise your hand right now. Raise your hand if you have additional question. Raise your hand and you have a few minutes for me to answer anything else. Unfortunately, I, I did not get to the point uh, of where I was able to uh, go over everything. So Mike has an additional question. Okay, Mike, go ahead. What's your additional question? Gerald, thank you. It's great information today. Um, you mentioned Michael Porter's analysis several times during the course of the call. Is there a template that you have that we can look at, or do we just need to go online and find it? You need um, to look up Michael Porter's Five Forces. That's all you have five. to put on online, and you'll find it. The document that I showed you earlier, the Acquisition Criteria mem Memo, is, in a way, a shortened version of the Michael Porter's Five Forces. Okay, It really comes from that. However... <clears throat> recommend that you go on again there's all sorts of websites that love to use Michael Porter's analysis any other questions there Mike is, is there going to be a repository set up for some of these documents where we can just go in and get them as opposed to sending you an email since you're so underwater there yeah send me the email yes it's planned on the future my team has that on a list of uh, projects but they have it in a no never project right now <laughs> so uh, you know I'm trying to move it up in the project plan we, we we meet every month and we go over all our projects and look at which ones we can institutionalize that's coming and I just don't know when Mike I, until then unfortunately uh, it would free me up but uh, once again what I really like is you want people on these Thursday calls these Thursday calls and I'm recording them now, so there will be a re repository. See, I never know what I'm going to do on these calls, Mike, and I invent it. I go, what, you know, what patterns am I seeing with executives? And this is the basics. So you're going to see at least a repository uh, of information on these visual webinars that you're going to be able to use in the future. Listen, I want to really thank everyone for being on this call. It really matters. You matter to me. Thank you for working with Blackmore Partners. I look forward to being a success with you. And remember, it's a 12 to 24-month process. And uh, see you next Thursday.